Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Let's get into the topic of the day. And on Saturday, as I said, Jaden Hardy, five-star guard, chose to sign with the G League, choosing offers over, you know, Kentucky, UCLA, whatever. A little bit of backstory for people who are not super plugged into the high school recruiting rankings. Basically, Jaden Hardy, the last truly elite difference-making player that was available in this recruiting cycle, uh, I mentioned last week when Patrick Baldwin committed to his to play for his father at Milwaukee, there's three, four, five guys at the top, and you can kind of put them in any order. Paolo Banchero, who's going to Duke. Uh, Chet Holmgren, who's going to Gonzaga. Pat Baldwin, who's going to Milwaukee. But this kid, Jaden Hardy, is right there. 6'4 guard, elite, super talented player, uh, three-level score. The comparison that a lot of people have made to Jaden Hardy is to Bradley Beal. I can totally see it. This kid is a star. And I'm obviously, look, it goes without saying that I'm really disappointed that we are not going to see him in college basketball. I'm going to explain why in a minute I actually think it's a good sign. Uh, the, I don't think it's a good sign for college basketball, but I think it's, it's a better sign for college basketball than people realize. But I'm obviously disappointed that he's not going to be playing in college basketball. Incredible talent, incredibly gifted, a fun game that translates to the college level, and I think he would have had a Jalen Suggs-type impact in college basketball next year from the perspective that he would have been super dynamic, super fun to watch, super, uh, you know, uh, would have lived up to the hype, and he has a game that is really, like, tailor-made for Sports Center for YouTube, for all of the stuff that gets people excited about college basketball and excited uh, to watch an individual player, a, a marquee team, etc. And so on the one hand, yes, I am very disappointed that he is not going to college basketball. On the other hand, I, 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 I don't blame him. And I think anybody who listens to this show regularly knows where I stand on all this. I wish all these kids came to college basketball. I think college basketball has some inherent value that nobody talks about, which we'll get into in a minute. But what I would also say is I will never begrudge any individual young man or woman, frankly, if they have an opportunity to do the same, to go make money to help support their family. And so when it came down to Jaden Hardy's recruitment, it felt like really while there was some initial buzz with Kentucky early, then there was a little bit of UCLA buzz, the G League had basically been the favorite and the front runner, if you will, for his commitment really over the last four, five, six months. And so if he felt that he needed to do this to help support his family, I am never going to blame him. To be blunt, as far as college is concerned, I know we got a bunch of Kentucky fans that listen. I know there was some buzz when Orlando Antigua and Chin Coleman, the two top assistant coaches, both signed on to, uh, to coach at Kentucky. There was some buzz. Maybe they can get in the, the side door and convince them to come to college. I was actually told that this was basically done even before they got to Kentucky, that maybe Kentucky put on a good effort at the end, but that this was basically a done deal long before they even got there. He may have even signed the contract officially with the G League two, three, four weeks ago, and that it was never realistic that he was going to go to Kentucky or go to UCLA. But again, for the record, never blame any player for choosing to help support his family. At the same time, I actually think, as I mentioned a minute ago, when I saw his commitment and I actually thought about it, I actually think this is a great sign for college basketball, believe it or not, and let me explain why. Because I know right now you, you're thinking I'm crazy. How could you possibly? Torres, what are you talking about? You're turning on us. Are you a G League Ignite fan now? Do you love the G League more than you love college hoops? No, I don't. But what I would also say is when I think about this G League, when I think about this cycle, here is what you need to know about the second iteration of the G League Ignite is that as of right now, they have only signed three high school players total and only two five-stars. This kid, Jaden Hardy, 
Michael Foster, who's another five-star, who basically from the beginning it was presumed that he was going to choose a professional path. And then they signed some other kid uh, who's originally from China. He was actually committed to Gonzaga. But if you think that it's going to be a loss for Gonzaga, he actually wasn't even going to be in the rotation next year. He was going to be the eighth, ninth, tenth man at Gonzaga. And so when I look at what happened with the G League this year, I'm actually very happy because as of right now, they only have three guys signed for this entire program for next season. Now, the question becomes, of course, how do you put together a team when you only have three guys? That remains to be seen. That's another question for another day. And, of course, the reality is that other guys, in theory, could sign with the G League going forward. But let's also be realistic with where we are on the calendar. It is the end of May, the middle of May going into the end of May. Within the next 10 days or so, all of these freshmen are set to report to their individual campuses. Uh, you know, Auburn, Alabama, Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, Gonzaga. All these teams are bringing back players for summer classes here in the next two, three, four weeks. So the idea that the G League is just going to swoop in and steal a bunch of guys at the end, it doesn't appear as though that is going to happen. And it appears as though the G League is only going to get three guys from the entire 21, 2021 class and really only two guys in general that, that were like going to be marquee college players. And so part of why I actually think this is a great sign for college basketball is because one, only two guys have actually signed with the G League program. But I think we also have to take a step back to this time last year when the G League program was first initiated in April. For people who don't remember all the details, Jalen Green, we're thinking it's down to Memphis and Auburn and maybe I forget who, one or two other schools. He was a top five recruit in high school basketball. He's going to choose Memphis. He's going to choose Auburn. And then all of a sudden, this professional route um, pops up, and it's not Australia, and it's not overseas, and you don't have to go very far. And when Jalen Green signed with this G League program, I, like a lot of people, was like, uh-oh, this could be really bad for college basketball. Jalen Green signs, Isaiah Todd signs just a day or two later. He was set to go to the University of Michigan. And if you remember, there was this huge wave of news over about a 24-hour period that they were going to sign a bunch of these elite players, that Jalen Suggs could choose the G League, that, um, that uh, Terrence Clark, the late Terrence Clark, might choose the G League over the University of Kentucky. And there was a real belief at this point last year, really more April than May, that they were going to take all the top high school basketball players and that none of those elite players were ever going to come to college basketball anymore. And so when you go back to this time last year, I think there was real concern in college basketball. Like, these elite players will never come play college basketball again. And I, I'll even take it a step further. I remember when Oklahoma State was banned from the NCAA tournament in June of last year. The G League tried to swoop in and get Cade Cunningham to leave Oklahoma State to go to, to go to the G League. And had he done that, I remember having a show when that happened. I said, if he goes to the G League, it means that him, Jalen Green, uh, Jonathan Kaminga, all these really good players are going. And once they get drafted really high, there's never going to be a reason for players to come back to college basketball. And so this was the thought process a year ago about this G League. And when Cade Cunningham almost went to the G League, decided to come to Oklahoma State, I was really worried. And I think most people in college basketball are really worried. Like, these elite players are just not going to come to college basketball anymore. So to fast forward a year and to see all these elite players, by the way, late in the process commit, they, you know behind the scenes they were being offered a lot of money by that G League to join their program. Instead, Chet Holmgren chooses to go to Gonzaga. Instead, uh, Patrick Baldwin chooses to go play for his father at Milwaukee. Instead, Ty Ty Washington, who we know had some form of professional options, chooses to go to Kentucky. The fact that all these five-star guys chose college basketball over professional options, that is a great sign for college basketball, and I'll take it a step further. It's not just a great sign that they chose college basketball over these pro options, but especially in this year. Because remember, all of the great things that we love about college basketball, this high school recruiting class didn't get to experience any of them. You know how many of these kids had to commit without ever visiting the campuses that they're now going to play college basketball at? Ty Ty Washington, 
never been to Kentucky. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of other guys. I can't name everybody off the top of my head. But if there was ever a year where you would think there was just going to be a bunch of elite kids say, I'm not going to play college. I've never been to the campuses. I've never met the coach face to face. I've never had the opportunity to sit in a full Cameron indoor arena, a full Dean Dome, a full Rupp arena. I mean, the college basketball that they saw as high school seniors this year, it's not the college basketball that we know and love. And so the fact that so many of them, without visiting college campuses, without meeting the coach face-to-face, -face, still decided to choose college over the pros is great for college basketball. Because guess what? In a week or two, these coaches are going to be able to go back on the road, going to be able to get these kids back on campus. They're going to be able to have them on campus for official visits for uh, Big Blue Madness, the the – uh, the opening night for Kentucky, the, the Duke Big Blue Madness, whatever the heck they call it, the craziness at the kennel, which is what Gonzaga's Midnight Madness is called. They're going to be able to get fans in Fog Allen Fieldhouse, Rupp Arena, Cameron Indoor, Dean Do Like, the kids that are now going to be recruited are going to see college basketball at its best. This past class saw college basketball at its worst, and most of them still chose college basketball. Like I said, in total, they've only, the, the G League has signed three players total and only two total five stars. As I joked on Twitter the other night, Gonzaga, with the commitment of Nolan Hickman this weekend, who was previously committed to Kentucky, Gonzaga signed more five stars this year, Hunter Salas, Chet Holmgren, and Nolan Hickman, than the entire G League did. So what does it tell you? What it tells me is this. It tells me what I told you all along and what I said is coming true is that I think a lot of parents, a lot of players, a lot of people that advise these players, they're starting to say what I have been saying for years. The value of college basketball is immense. And so again, I will never blame a player for choosing to take a professional path over going to Duke or going to Kentucky or going to Gonzaga or going to Kansas. I'll never do it. Because every person has their own individual situation. Some of them need money. Some of them need to help their families. Some of them just don't like school. Some of them want that professional environment. But I also think a lot of them are realizing, you know what? For everything everyone tries to tell me on Twitter about how evil college basketball is, how evil the NCAA is, college basketball is a really great platform for young people. Look at what it did for Jalen Suggs. Look at what it did for Evan Mobley. I think I've told this story on the show before, but I talked to the parent of a five-star player in this 2021 class, and I talked to him right when this G League option first became an option a year ago. His son was going into his senior year, and I kind of asked him off the record. I said, you know, y you think you, this is something you guys would consider? And I won't say the parent's name. I won't say the player's name, but he is now committed to go to college at one of these elite programs. Maybe it's Gonzaga, Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, UCLA, whatever. I won't say which one it is, but I bring it up because I asked him, he goes, listen, we're going to listen to everything. We're not going to turn down a meeting, but I got to be honest. If my son goes to Duke or my son goes to North Carolina or my son goes to Kentucky, he goes, that is the greatest exposure we can possibly Duke plays on national TV 40 times a year. Duke plays on national TV more than basically any NBA team does except for maybe the Los Angeles Lakers. And so he said if he's going to Duke or he's going to Kentucky or he's going to whoever, that is the greatest marketing tool that he could possibly have. On top of that, what he also said, which I found interesting, was he goes, why am I going to have NBA people, and he used this term and I loved it, looking under the hood of the car, in other words, working with my son every day, picking apart his game, I'll send him to college. And you know what? When he gets out of college, um, whether it is John Calipari, Mark Few, Coach K, Roy Williams, Juwan Howard, whoever it is, whoever I send him to, when it comes to the NBA draft process, you know what's going to happen? They're going to say great things. Oh, I loved having him. Couldn't, couldn't, wish he had stayed for four years. That's what they will say when the draft process starts, as opposed to going to the G League where you're practicing, 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 and NBA people are around you all the time. And if you don't like to practice, if you don't like to compete, if you don't like to lift, if you don't eat right, if you are out late, if you're chasing, like, they're going to find that out about you that they probably won't if you go to Duke, if you go to Kentucky, Gonzaga, Kansas, whatever. 
And so I'm just going to wrap by saying, again, stuff could change. I'm recording late Sunday. By Monday afternoon, four guys could say, I'm going to skip college and go to the G League. I don't think it'll happen, but it could. Um, You know, things can change. Stuff can happen. But at the same time, when I look back on this cycle, this specific cycle, when these kids couldn't visit college campuses, when these kids didn't have a chance to meet these coaches face-to-face, and the fact that so many of them said, you know what, even though I couldn't get to Kentucky, even though I couldn't get to Duke, Gonzaga, Kansas, I've said all the schools, I won't keep repeating myself, even though I couldn't do that, even though I never got to see what a full Rupp Arena, a full Fog Allen, a full kennel in Gonzaga, a full Pauley Pavilion, even though I didn't get to see any of that, you know what, I'm still going to go play college basketball, I'm going to take advantage of the exposure, I'm going to take advantage of everything that college basketball provides for me, I didn't even talk about what the NCAA tournament did for Jalen Suggs from a marketing standpoint and Evan Mobley from a marketing standpoint, Cade Cunningham, even though they didn't make a deep run, a marketing standpoint, Davion Mitchell. I think parents are starting to realize what I said. And oh, by the way, wait until name image likeness comes about and you can actually pay these kids some money while they're on campus. I'm not saying college basketball won the war against the G League and all these professional paths. But what I'm saying is, at least for one year, for one day, when I'm recording right now, it's a great time to be a college basketball fan because we are going to get a lot of really fun players on college campuses this year.